Hey, what's up, good people? How you doing? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. You guys know we are the fav- we are the family, rather, known as Stock Up with Larry Jones. Um, it was over half a million of us. We just want everybody to make money. We want everybody to sit at the table and eat, all right? So uh, take a minute. Uh, I'll take a second, actually, and hit that like, subscribe, notification bell. As always, never fall for spam in the comment section, right? Anything I say is not a suggestion for you to buy, hold, or sell. We're going to get right into it. At the end of this video, please check out all of my links below. Some pretty helpful stuff, a lot of free stuff in there for you guys, okay? Um, let's talk about what happened on yesterday, especially after I made... Uh, what I thought was a pretty good uh, video about the market and the CPI numbers. CPI numbers came out, market went up, and then it tanked. Uh, You know, closing bell was one of those days like it was a Friday. Of course, now we're back up. So let me just talk about what's going on in the overall market and touch on crypto also. Right. So we're just starting earnings season again, right? Banks are earning, uh, I'm sorry, banks are reporting. And um, JP Morgan reported, Jamie Dimon, who I'm not fond of, uh, he's very hawkish and he's 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 negative most of the time. Uh, and and uh, their earnings were not good, okay? So banks are not doing well. Uh, I believe JP Morgan is leading the downward trend in banks. I do not have JP Morgan. I got out of JP Morgan in January. Didn't think it was a good one, but I do have banks, right? So I don't know what I'm going to do with my banks. I'm going to continue to hold through these interest rate hikes. And at some point I'm going to get out of banks because uh, banks could just trade sideways for years, right? I had Citibank for over 10 years and, you know, banks just get caught in this 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 sad with trading pattern that I'm not a big fan of, right? So the CPI numbers came out on yesterday. We were expecting 8.4 and it came out 8.5. The CPI, Consumer Price Index. Just think about a measuring tool that measures the price of goods and services that we use. So that's the CPI, right? You got the CPI and you got GDP, gross domestic product, right? The higher gross domestic product, the better, right? The higher CPI, it's worse, right? That's bad for the economy, okay? So uh, gross domestic product, GDP, rising is good. CPI, uh, consumer price index, is bad for the market, okay? So now what happens was uh, when it first came out, pre-market, market market was negative. So the the pre-market was negative, but then they came out with a core CPI and that excluded, uh, let's say you look at the more core, you measure the more core things and not things that were spiked. So let's just take out the gas spike of the geopolitical situation because that's not the norm. OK, so we know that the Ukraine Russian war spiked up oil prices. So they tried to gauge it without that. And then that came in pretty decent. So the market, when it opened, it ran green. Now, this is after the CPI numbers already came out at 8.5. We expected 8.4. So and then intraday, we saw another spike and then a down, uh, another spike and then down again. So pre-markets down, uh, opening market up and then back down midday up and then back down at the end. The market just didn't know how to handle it. And so that's so what I said at the time yesterday was actually correct. Uh, Today is actually a reflection of it. Market overreacted. Uh, So the market, remember, overreacted the day before and it kind of priced it in. So we have to understand that the stock market is looking forward. Right. So um, let's get into some things. Well, let me finish reading these notes and then I want to talk about some things that I talked about yesterday with reopening stock. So I want to, I want you to ask yourself, uh, two things. What happens when the CPI numbers come out better than expected? What's going to happen next month? Because 
clearly to me, March CPI numbers will be higher than April, all right? So let's think about what's going to happen when April CPI numbers come out because we're seeing slowing down in the housing market. We're seeing slowing down in inflation. So remember uh, a barrel of oil last month, 130, and now they've come down. And so you have to ask yourself what's going to happen, right? Then that was question number one. Question number two is what happens when the geopolitical situation uh, is over? What's going to happen with oil? I'm saying that now because we have to be ready to what? We have to be ready to uh, transition, okay, uh, out of oil. I am out of my oil. I sold it when it was, uh, you know, up at 130-ish a barrel. And so you have to be ready to rotate before it's time to rotate not after we don't want to miss the boat so i just want you guys to keep that in mind with your oil um and you may want to engage some stop losses okay on your oil a lot of analysts think that there's going to be a lot of time with oil but you got to be careful because sometimes these geopolitical situations um end much quicker than they begin so there's a ramp up and then they end when it ends and we come to some sort of agreement, I believe oil will start to come down. All right. So let's look at what's going on here. All right. So as at the time of this recording, all right, I have to say that now at the time of this recording, uh, we got about 30 minutes left. We actually got 28 minutes left before closing bell today is wednesday before closing bell i'm re recording this 28 minutes before closing bell so as you can see the s p is up the dow is up nasdaq is nasdaq is up and the russell is up so okay so all of the indexes are up and they're doing well right so what did i mention yesterday uh I mentioned this. You know what? Let's get this out of the way. A lot of people are asking about Volta. Now, nothing has changed on Volta, right? Other than it being up 4% today, uh, there is no news on Volta. It's still the same news about nine days ago. See here? So go to www.yahoofinance.com and you can see nine days ago when I reported on it, 11 things Volta CEO told us about uh, told us before he resigned. Okay. So what I want to say to you guys is go read that for yourself, but there is no new news on Volta as of yet that I see that's going to move it. So I am not doing anything with Volta. I still have my Volta. I'm not buying more Volta until they get a new CEO. If he's a bad CEO, I will not buy any more. If it's a good CEO, I will double down. So there's no need in charting Volta right now until they get a new CEO. So there's really nothing to talk about until that happens. All right, good people. Hopefully everybody that's constantly asking about Volta, I hope that you understand that until that happened, there's no reason to be talking about it until they do that. Right. Let's say the, the car is not rolling until we get gas in there. Right. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, so let's look at some of the plays that I mentioned yesterday. I mentioned reopening stock. Remember, I mentioned that yesterday that I'm buying into some reopening stock. And uh, let me blow that up for you guys. There we go. OK. And so reopening stock is what we're looking at, what I'm looking at. And I'm currently in. Uh, you guys know that I brought up PK yesterday, right? We were up yesterday and look again, parks and hotels reopening, right? And so, yes, we know that COVID cases are going up, but we're also heading for the summer months. What happens with the summer months? Uh, COVID cases start to fall. When is the best time to have uh, to get into reopening plays when they're beat down? And so that's what I've done. Right. Even if you would have gotten in yesterday, if you would have looked at my video, you would still be up today. Look at this. PK, I gave you guys this yesterday. 
right? It's up another 9% today. Uh, Hilton Hotels is up 6%. American Airlines is up almost 10.5%. Norwegian Cruise Lines is up 6%. And I have an um, option on Norwegian Cruise Line, and it's up 24% today alone. Uh, so I have the September call options, okay? So here's what I want before you guys ask me about options. I do not teach options here. It's going to be something we're going to be doing down the road months down. But I'll tell you where you can learn about options. I'm going to give you two places. Number one, I'm going to leave a video or a link right here, and it's going to send you to a page. It's called Stocks with Josh. I want everybody that's listening to me to go over it and to subscribe to that page. He comes here. We do Technical Tuesdays. We're going to be doing a whole lot of stuff on both pages. And he has a wealth of information that's going to help to make all of you guys a lot of money. We want you to look at that. Also, too, tonight on Keenan Grace's page, tonight it will be Stock Mo. Keenan Grace and myself, we will be going live at 7 Eastern time, okay? 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's going to be on Keenan Grace's uh, uh, page. You guys already know I love those brothers. Those are my buddies for life. Those are my YouTube brothers, right? And so that's what I want to talk about. But let's look at some more things here, right? Um, let's look at PK. Let's look at how PK is doing long term okay so we always chase the hot stocks but sometimes we just need to get out of the hype stock and get into something else right let's look at how it's been performing over the last five days up seven percent uh one month five percent beat down uh so as you can see we're roller coastering right let's go year to date flat so this is one of those things that runs in cycles, okay? This is not a hold forever stock, okay? I get in, I make 30% and I'm out, okay? Sometimes I make more than that, but these are the type of plays that I get into every time there's COVID cases. I started, I did this play in 2020, did it in 2021, and now I'm doing it this year, and I'll probably be doing it next year because there will be some other kind of variant that comes. And these are reopening plays for me. Now, we know that we have, you know, the uh, uh, um, consumer discretionary. We know that we have the Walgreens and the Walmarts are good to buy during recessions and times like this. We know that you could also make money um, uh, with pharma pharmaceuticals. Those are the ones in, in healthcare. Those are good uh, long-term money makers doing a bear market and a recession. So if you want industries that you can invest in, these are some. But if you want some swing plays, remember, all of these stock that I just mentioned to you are not long hold okay um, um let's see here did i erase it yeah i did sorry about that guys but you guys you can rewind and go back and look at uh, hotels airlines and cruise lines and you have to pick the right ones all you got to do is look at uh charting some of the ones that i was showing you guys now here's the danger in these reopening stock if the geopolitical situation gets worse which it probably we got probably got one more big punch because i don't believe that putin is is done right and so i believe we got one more big punch coming that will cause these to you know drop and that's when i go in and i double down myself but if you're not in you may see an opportunity but just remember that it will be a volatile ride now you have to do your own profit taking so I can give you a signal, hey, these are nice looking, but it's up to you to say when to get out, okay? So remember to download my links below, download the Weeble, get uh, uh, up to $9,600 worth of free stock, five stock if, if you don't have it, and now Moomoo.
because we're going to be doing trailing stop losses within the Moo Moo app. And we're going to be cashing up in the Moo Moo app, getting ready for the recession because we're going to make a killing from the recession. Um, and no one really knows when the recession is coming. We can only guesstimate. All right. That's guessing and estimating. Right. And so we're looking at somewhere Q2 or Q3 of next year or 2024. All right. Hopefully something I said will help you. Remember to join me tonight with Keenan Grace and Stock Mo. We're going live. We're going to have a good time like we always do. And I want everyone to subscribe to this page. You're going to see something in the box here or a link here right in here. OK, everyone go over there and subscribe now because he actually did a whole layout on all crypto. As a matter of fact, let me look at crypto. I said crypto before. Let's look at where crypto is. So, uh, let's see here. As we can see, Bitcoin is up. Ethereum, everything is pretty green. Nothing, you know, nothing earth shattering. Uh, I think that crypto is kind of like in a holding pattern trying to see what the NASDAQ is doing. And if you look at crypto and you look at the NASDAQ, you'll see a correlation. Uh, some people think it's the S&P. Some people think it's the NASDAQ. So if you look at the NASDAQ, the S&P and crypto, you will see a correlation. And if you think that crypto is an island by itself, it is not. It is correlating with the market, with the with the with actually the U.S. stock market because of upcoming adoption. And when it's fully adopted, there will be a greater correlation. But... Remember, crypto has bigger swings. So there are going to be there's going to be upcoming seasons where stock market goes up 10 percent. Crypto will go up 40 percent. So there's a ton of money to be made in crypto. That's also going to be on stock uh, on stocks with Josh. He actually made a video that he's posting Thursday about the overall crypto market. So if you have any questions on any crypto, I suggest that you look at his video that's going to be posted on Thursday. So you'll have an overall picture of the entire crypto market. All right. I'm going to leave it right there. Good people. As, as always in parting, make sure you check out those links below. Live, love, laugh, and learn. Let's hit it. What's up, good people?